For today's topic, we're going to know more about Jacques Louis David. Born in Paris to a wealthy family, Jacques Louis David was raised by his mother's two architect brothers and educated at boarding school. David defied his family's hopes that he too would train to be an architect or pursue a career in law or medicine by deciding to become an artist. Francois Bougeat was a relative of David's and arranged for the young artist to study with the more fashionable artists like Joseph Marie Vigne, believing them to be of compatible style. While a student, David was maimed during a fencing match with a colleague a facial injury that compounded a speech impediment. The wound eventually became a non-malignant tumor that made his speech even more difficult and resulted in a visible deformity to his face. In 1766, he enrolled at the Royal Academy of Painting and Sculpture, determined to win the prestigious Prix de Rome, which funded a residency in Rome, he was initially unsuccessful. David tried to starve himself to death after losing one attempt. He feared that the judges were against him, developing a paranoia that lasted throughout his career. He endured the long and difficult competition five times before winning the prize in 1774. His first commission is an altarpiece, St. Roach interceding with the Virgin for the Black Stricken in 1780, which brought him great recognition. As a member of the Academy, David took on many pupils with one of the most popular painting studios where young artists could apprentice. This school of David would spawn the next generation of French painters, although many of them would rebel against the style of their teacher. David is often associated with the French Revolution of 1789, while the Oath of the Horati became a visual symbol of the people's struggle. It was painted for a royal patron years earlier. Eventually, he became a full-fledged participant in revolution, aligning with the radical Jacobins' party. As a member of the National Convention, he oversaw the death of former friends who resisted revolutionary ideals. He even voted in favor of the execution of Louis XVI. He also used his art to support and celebrate the revolution and its heroes, most famously Jean-Paul Marat. His memorial painting of the assassination of Marat would become a central image of revolutionary sacrifice and propaganda. David's alliance with the Jacobin soon became a liability. However, he was arrested for treason in August 1794. Due to ill health and a fear that he would try to commit suicide, he was released from prior to be granted amnesty in October 1795. While in prison, David's eyesight began to weaken, yet his personal and professional life did not suffer. In December 1795, he was nominated to the Academy de Peinture et de Sculpture, which had replaced the Royal Academy as the central art institution in France. His work was in demand again, in part because he had gained the favor of the new leader of France, Napoleon Bonaparte. In December 1803, Napoleon named him as Knight of Legion and commissioned a work of commemorating his coronation as emperor. This political association would lead to David's exile when Napoleon fell from power in 1815. David had no place in the Restoration monarchy. King Louis XVIII's government persecuted those who had supported Napoleon. As a result, David was exiled from France. In January 1816, he and his wife settled in Brussels where he spent the rest of his life. Despite feeling held, he continued to work, taking commissions for portraits and completing his last great painting, Mars Disarmed by Venus in the Three Graces in 1824. At this time, some of his students tried to negotiate his return to France, but angry at the country that had turned him away and perhaps aware that neoclassical style was no longer in fashion there, he refused any attempt. 
David died in Brussels in 1825. His wife, also in poor health, had returned to Paris for medical treatment and was not with him in his final days. The French monarchy refused to allow his body to be returned to France for burial. Allegedly, after his wife died, their son secretly placed David's heart in her coffin as she was buried in Paris. As part of the 200th anniversary of the revolution, the French government tried to repatriate David's remains in 1989, but the Belgian government refused based on the argument that his grave had become a historical monument. David used his art to sway political opinion, carry favor with government regimes, and fuel uprisings. His direct political involvement brought history painting in contact with current affairs. This immediacy would inspire later artists to represent the contemporary world, although romantics, many of whom were David's students, would radically imagine the engagement to criticize those in power, rendering more emotionally laden narratives in a more painterly style. And that's it! I hope you learned something about our neoclassical artist, Jacques Louis David. Until then, I'll see you on my next video. God bless and goodbye.